Our Parsha discusses the tragic episode of the spies. These were 12 men, leaders of the generation, leaders of their tribes, that Moshe sent to the Holy Land, to the land of Canaan, to do a reconnaissance, to see what type of a country it was, and to bring back a report. Moshe was absolutely convinced, because he believed everything that Hashem said, that it was a beautiful country, it was a country that they could inhabit, and that they would be very happy and prosperous there. But when the spies came back after 40 days, they presented a very demoralizing report. They said, yes, it's a beautiful country. And they even displayed some of the fruits. But they said that there the cities are like fortresses. The people are mighty. And we cannot beat them. We cannot defeat them. We're going to die here in the wilderness. And everybody cried and performed. And because of this, God said, well, you rejected my land. You're not going to go into the land. You're going to wander here in the wilderness 40 years, one year for each day that they spent traveling around the land of Israel, the spies. And you will die out and your children will come in. It'll be a new generation that comes into the land. Now, it wasn't all of the spies that brought a negative report. In fact, it was only 10 of the spies. But there were two spies who did not come back with a negative report. And in fact, they were against those colleagues. One of them was from the tribe of Yehuda, that was Kalev ben Yefuneh, and the other one was Yehoshua, Joshua. And Joshua was the main student of Moshe. In fact, when Moshe passed away, it was Joshua who took his place. Moshe thought it would be one of his two children, Gershom or Eliezer, but Hashem said, no, it's going to be Joshua. It's going to be Joshua. What was so special about Joshua? Why was he the one who succeeded Moshe? Why was he the one spy or one of the spies who did not believe the negative report of the other spies. And the Talmud tells us that what made Joshua so unique is his connection to his master, to Moshe. Yoshua was absolutely connected to Moshe. He followed Moshe everywhere. He learned from Moshe. He was the first one to come in the morning and the last one to leave in the evening. He was the one who clung to him. You see, there's two ways of learning. You can learn in a formal way, in a classroom from a teacher, but you can also watch how that teacher behaves. You can watch what they do. And when it comes to Torah, it's not so much about the lessons, what's in the books, but it's how the person actually translates the, the Torah into life. That's where you really learn. And that's what Joshua wanted. He wanted to see not just how Moshe taught Torah and learned Torah, but how he applied Torah in his life. And therefore he stuck to him. And Hashem came to Moshe and he said, no, it's not going to be your two sons who will take your place. It'll be Joshua. Joshua was the one who looked after the vineyard, who looked after the orchard, be, meaning you, and therefore he's going to benefit from the fruits. And this is something that we should try to do, to find somebody, an upstanding person, a teacher of Torah, to connect to that person and to learn from them, not just formally, but informally. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.